the middle by God Almighty to say, come to me. Come to me. I am no longer hidden from you. I am no longer distant from you. I am no longer just part of your imagination. I am available to you. That is what Jesus Christ was brought to this earth to do, to repair and restore and to make whole that access to God that we hadn't had. To reestablish whole and complete relationships. When we see our connection to Christ, when we tru truly see our connection to Christ, we can start to emulate Christ in our lives. We can start to be like him. Not out of, I have to, but out of, I want to. And I am a huge fan of that. If you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior simply to get saved from going to hell, well, you're missing a lot. Amen. Right? Like, and if that's all that's important to you, then cool. You know, I mean, if that's all that, and, and there are Christians that are absolutely ice cold or at best lukewarm because that's all their relationship to Jesus Christ is about. I just don't want to go to hell. I'm going to continue to be a jerk. <laughs> 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 God gives me a lot of restraint. <laughs> he really does, right? Did you, so did you ask him to be your Lord and Savior because you want a relationship with him? Right? Do you want to have a, a power in your life that can truly help you live a better life? Right? Because that's what I need. That's what I need. Um, if you accepted Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior because you want a relationship with a power that can help you do better on a daily basis, then, then this message is probably for you. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And man, I don't know about you, but I am worn the heck out most days. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and when life is coming at me like life has been coming at me for the past year, couple years, but especially, the, I mean, everybody in unison can say the way life has been coming at me in the past year can say, I am tired, I am weary, and I am heavy laden, and I am over this crap, right? And that, he says, come to me. Come to me if that is who you are and if that, if that is where you are. Come to me. You know, we have somebody in our life that's really, really special to us, and we don't go to them when we're worn out. Our relationship is not what it could be, right? You know, and that, that is honestly the number one problem in most, most human relationships, is that we don't feel comfortable going to each other. But if we don't feel comfortable going to Jesus Christ when we are tired and worn out, we got real problems. He says, come to me. Come to me. And if we've come to him in that initial relationship of salvation, trust, we have come to him. And at that point, he not only says, come to me, but girl, man, you are united with me. I am in you. That resurrection power is in you. We are no longer, so this takes us to the next part of this, which is we are no longer enslaved to our sin. Right? We're not, we're not owned by our sin. We have been set free from that garbage behavior. And the word sin really makes people uncomfortable. It makes us wiggle around in our chairs. We don't like it. It sounds bad. It's just screwing up. Right? So we can just say that. We can just say that, you know, whatever, whatever we've got going on, we are not owned by our mistakes. There's a better way to say you are not enslaved by sin. We are not owned by them. We have been set free from that. We have been set free, you guys, to live. And in this scripture, it specifically talks about that new life. We have to consider ourselves alive in Christ. We have to consider ourselves able to grow and change because live things grow and they change. And if we are alive, we are capable of growth, maturing, and changing. Live things also thrive when they are fed well from their power source. Right? So a plant is not going to grow well in dry ground. 
it needs to be watered. And our relationship with God, with Jesus Christ, has to be watered. But when our relationship, our, when that is being taken care of from our power source, from God, from Jesus Christ, from fellowship, you guys, our power source is limitless. There is absolutely no limit whatsoever to the power of God in our life through that relationship with Jesus Christ. There's no limit on that. None. He can transform our relationships with each other, making us more capable of being in relationship with each other because we practice that relationship with him. He can transform our attitudes, believe it or not. You know, there... I hate this sentence, especially when it comes out of a Christian's mouth, just pisses me off. That's just how I've always been. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, it's just how I am. Really? Well, it's just probably what I'm always going to be. Huh? Right? God is capable of changing anything <laughs> if we are capable of letting him. Right? He can transform our purpose in life. You know, we all just think we're kind of stuck. No, we're not stuck. You're able to change, move directions, turn around, do whatever you want at any point with his help. We are never stuck. And our purpose has not been accomplished yet until we die. So it's never too late to chase after your purpose. Okay, there's one catch. You guys knew that, right? There's one catch. Here comes the catch. We must not let our enemy, our opposition, our lower power, you know, that garbage that lives between our ears, we absolutely must not let that reign in our lives. That's the catch. And that's the only catch. There's no other catch. Like, there's, there's nothing, nothing else. There's nothing else. So when we see or feel or hear those opposing voices going on in our lives, when we feel those urges that come from the dark side, <laughs> right? When we've got all of that going on, we got it first, we have to recognize them, right? We have to recognize, oh crap, that might not be the voice of God. Why not? Why not? And then, once we recognize that voice, then we have to decide that we're not going to allow that to have dominion over us. We're not going to allow it to control us. So, verse 12 and four to 14, let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body. So, let not that voice, let not that lower power, let not that enemy reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to that voice as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For that voice and that nonsense and those lies and that enemy and that crap will not have dominion over you since you are not under law but under grace. The end. The end. We are not under law. We are not under that old system. We are not under that, I gotta go fix it, I gotta go make it right, I gotta go beg God again, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta. He said, come to me. We did. We are not under that law system of having to fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. We have been sanctified by grace. Grace, by definition, is God's unearned, divine assistance given to us to generate a new life and to sanctify us. God's sanctification of us is to set us apart as holy. To set us apart as holy. To set us apart for a sacred purpose to serve him to free us from that sin and to give us a moral code and the ability to live by that moral code 
All of that sometimes scares people. I think it ought to give us a lot of peace. I think knowing that, that, that God's divine assistance in sanctifying me is simply to say, Jamie, you are, you are set apart as holy. I see you as holy. I don't, I don't see that crap you did Tuesday. I don't see it. I don't see it. It's been washed. It's in the sea of forgetfulness. I have forgotten about it already. You know who remembers it? Our enemy. He's the jerk that remembers it. Right? And he's got a laundry list on you. And he is the one that comes back every day and says, remember what you did Monday? Remember who you hurt Tuesday? Remember that crap you talked on Thursday? And Jesus Christ is like, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't, it's gone. Like, I have forgotten about it. I have set you apart as holy. And I want to see you walk in your sacred purpose. And your sacred purpose is to love me and to just try to live better. So forget that and move on. Just forget that and move on. What, so what I want to talk about is what motivates us to live better, right? And I'm going to call that holy living. And again, that scares people. These words that we get scared about, that's just crap in our head, right? Holy living just simply means living better, right? So that's what I want to talk about is just living better. First of all, we have to want to be better. If I don't want to be better, there's absolutely no chance that I am going to be better. The battle against wrong living and right living, that battle, it happens in the old self. That old self. B.C., before Christ. That old self, you guys, I don't know about you, but I do, because I pastor the Bikers Church, so I do know a little bit about most of you. And that is that our old self has been expertly trained to be a jerk. Right? Our, our old self has years and years and years of garbage living built up in it. And that stuff rises to the surface. So we have to unlearn that. We have to be willing to unlearn that. Our old self is fed by a world system that is in complete conflict with the goodness of God. Amen? Amen. Our world system is in complete conflict with God. And our old self is drawn into that world system. Our old self is drawn into, well, yeah, but, and I might look bad, and somebody's going to say something, and then somebody's not going to be happy, and then, and we just have to shape that, you guys. We have to decide that our spiritual way of living is better, the end, than that world system crap. It just is. It's calmer, it's more peaceful. Our old self is fed by our enemy that is simply out to kill, steal, and destroy. Always. That is our enemy's goal. Kill, steal, and destroy. So for us to live holy, we have to constantly be willing to crucify self. We have to constantly be willing to say, no, not today. No, not today. Day by day by day, we choose to surrender our self-will and lean in to God's will and surrender ourselves to the new life that this talks about. We already have that new life. It is simply about letting Jesus Christ influence our daily decisions, our daily actions, and our daily reactions. And as we practice living in that new self, it becomes habit. Just like everything. You know, they say it takes 30, 30 days to break a habit or 30 days to make a habit. And then if you want to practice doing something, you got to practice for 30 days. And some days, practice is going to suck. And some days, practice is going to be great. But we will start to notice as we practice this over and over and over again that the primary influence on our lives has shifted from that old self to that new self. 
And that new self, as it gets built up and it gets better, it's going to shift itself right into gear with the mind, will, and emotions of God. And we're just going to start to walk in that new, new life really naturally. Um, the battle for holy living just starts to cease. And it starts to become more comfortable. I, I read a story, and I've read this story several times, and probably a lot of you have heard this story, but I like this story because it's, it's about the confusion of not knowing if you're free or not. There was an old slave woman in the South following the Civil War, and she was super confused about her status as a free woman. She said, am I free or am I not free? I don't understand if I'm free or if I'm not free. When I go to my old master, he says I'm not free. And when I go to my own people, they say that I am free. So I don't know if I'm free or if I'm not. I don't understand. Some people say that Abraham Lincoln signed a proclamation, but my master says he didn't have any right to. That is very, very close to what happens with a Christian. Because we get that confusion going on. Am I free or am I not free? I'm unsure about what the truth really means. I don't know if I can walk away from that old master. You know, that, that old master still kind of has me. So that, that old master has me, right? So does he have, am I free or am I not free? Because I can still walk back into that self-imposed prison if I want to. And did Jesus Christ really have the right to set me completely free? Did he really? Did he really? Well, I hope you believe he did. Because he did. Right? He has a crap ton more power than Abraham Lincoln ever did. Right? And I'll tell you what, if Jesus Christ says that you are free, you are free indeed. Amen? So, but, but we do. We get, we get caught in that. And so we're unsure about how to walk in that freedom, just like that slave woman was unsure about how to walk in that freedom. She's like, okay, well, I'm going to walk away from it, but boy, I don't know. It's pretty comfortable over here. You know? And then some people say, I really, you know? And we, we get caught in that. And my question is, how free do you want to be? How free do you want to be? Is the question. And only you know the answer. The answer for me is I want to be free. I really want to be free. And I totally believe that Jesus Christ died on that cross for me to be free. And I believe that God has thrown all that garbage, all the garbage, of today, yesterday, and tomorrow into the sea of forgetfulness as far as the east is from the west. I believe that with every ounce of my being. So are you the slave woman? Are you the slave woman? And is that where you want to be? In that place of unsureness? Or are you that blood-bought, blood-washed child of the Most High God that knows they are free? And my prayer for you always, and my prayer for me always, is that we are that person. And that we know we can walk in that newness of life. Do you think that Jesus had the right to set you free? Do you think it? Do you believe it? Or do you know it? No. Right? I want you to know it. And will you claim it? Every day. And you guys, I say it all the time, and I won't change my mind about it. When the enemy starts running his mouth, just tell him, thank you for sharing. Now shut up and go back to hell where you belong. <laughs> you don't have any reign over me. That's right. You don't get to lie to me anymore. You don't get to conf confuse me and conflict me. You don't get to do that to me anymore. That is how we claim our blood-bought freedom. And you guys, you have to do it out loud. So if you're at work and you're having a crappy day, you've got to go lock yourself in a closet somewhere, get back in your car and start screaming at the enemy. you got to scream at him because he can't read your mind. He does not have the ability. You have the helmet of salvation over your head. He can't read your mind, so you can't be like, talking trash. 
right? We can close our eyes and pray in silence and pray to God because he can read your mind and your soul. The helmet of salvation says he can get in there and read your mind and your soul. So you can pray in quietness and God and Jesus can hear all that. Holy Spirit's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But the enemy can't hear your thoughts. He can't hear them. But he creates them by whispering in your ear. So when you fight with him, you've got to fight out loud. And I think that is one huge mistake that Christians make. They forget they got to fight out loud. In the name of Jesus spoken, you must run back to hell where you belong, you punk. Right? And you got to talk to him like that. Because we hold power over him. He does not have dominion over us. So stand in the righteousness that you own. Stand in the holiness that is yours and stand in the sanctification that we do have because we are, in fact, set apart. Completely set apart to walk in life. So one more time, I will just simply say, how free do you want to be? Amen? Amen. Amen. Father God, I know, I believe that everybody in this sanctuary wants that freedom. I believe that people listening on Facebook want that freedom, and I believe people watching on YouTube want that freedom. I believe that we all want freedom for crying out loud. We live in the United States, and right now we're missing some of it. As Americans, we understand freedom. But as Christians, we should really understand freedom. So, Father God, I pray tonight that people will just claim this, that they will claim it, that they will own it, that they will speak it, and that they will live it, that we are not owned by our past, we are not owned by our failures, we are not owned by our mistakes, we are owned by righteousness. We are blood-bought. Jesus Christ shed his blood for us so that we can experience new life and hope and freedom. And so we claim it today. And we'll claim it in an hour, and we'll claim it tomorrow, and we'll claim it throughout the week. And we'll claim it over and over and over again, because yes, indeed, we do want to be set free. So, Father, thank you for that. Jesus, thank you for that. And Holy Spirit, thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, I'm going to mess her name up. Petra. What's her name? Evangeline. 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 Happy birthday to you.